Hi everyone. I have two more colligative properties to discuss. The first one, uh, it will be number three, vapor pressure lowering. And we'll also add Rolt's law into that discussion. And four, osmotic pressure raising. Okay. These two are pretty simple. The first one, vapor pressure lowering. So if you imagine a beaker, and let's put water in it. Well, on the surface, you have solute molecules. Actually, you have solute molecules distributed equally or evenly in the solution. But at the surface, you have actually less molecules of solvent than what you would normally have with a pure solvent. Well, if that's the case, then it should follow that you have less solvent at the surface. Uh, therefore, you'll have less vapor. And therefore, you are lowering the vapor pressure. Okay. We're going to use Raoult's law to describe this phenomenon. And Raoult's law states that the Pressure pressure of the solvent, I'll just use S, equals its mole fraction times its partial pressure when the solvent is pure. Again, this is actually the mole fraction of the solvent. If you're just dissolving a little bit of solute, then yeah, this will be you know close to 0 0.9, 0 0.95, but it's a decimal, and it's going to lower the vapor pressure of the pure solvent by a, a little bit. Is this the vapor pressure? A pure solvent. It's designated with this uh, little zero superscript. And then this is partial pressure. My textbook describes it in an unusual way. It's partial pressure of a solvent over a solution. If you think about the system up here, if your solute is solid normally, then really the only thing that's contributing to the vapor pressure right above the solvent or right above the solution is the only the solvent molecules. And that's how we get the partial pressure. That's basically it for uh, partial pressure, oh sorry, vapor pressure. That's it for the vapor pressure. Um, Actually, let me just specify here partial, um, we'll call it vapor pressure. Okay. I'm debating whether I should do a problem. I'll save the problems for another video. Let me talk about now osmotic pressure, number four. Consider this experiment. If we have uh, this YouTube, we're going to draw three of these eventually. But it's separated by a, uh, we'll call it a semi permeable membrane. And we have two solutions. Uh, the solution on the left 
we'll make it a uh, pure solvent. Let's make it blue. And on the other side, we dissolve a solute in that solvent and we'll make it pink. This is the solution. Hmm. You're probably familiar with the idea that if you put a red blood cell in a pure solvent, pure water, then what's going to happen is water is going to rush into that cell to try to equalize the salt content inside and outside of that cell. That's osmosis, right? The water is uh, being uh, moved to equalize the concentrations. So in this case, we have water going from the left to the right. That's the net movement of water. Because it's a semi-permeable membrane, only the water moves. Okay, and I'll put here not um, not solute. So all the side will stay on the the right side. Give this setup some time, and what you get is different levels of each liquid. Okay, and we have now pure water on the left, and some of that water had traveled to the right, raising the level of now the solution. So sure, the solution is now diluted, but uh, the fact of the matter is that water is rushing to the left. What is osmotic pressure? Osmotic pressure is the pressure required to prevent this from happening. Okay, and we're going to go back to the original heights of each liquid. And osmotic pressure is designated by this pi symbol. Okay. It's actually uppercase pi. Um, not, I think lowercase pi has a little more like curve to it. But anyway, uh, uppercase pi that is the osmotic pressure and what is it what are we measuring this is the pressure needed to prevent the movement of water let me get rid of this so this uh, pi is the pressure required to counteract the movement of water. Biochemical labs use this to, a lot of times, get the molar mass of a protein. They can measure the osmotic pressure at given concentrations. So pressure required to counteract the movement of water. And we could, re we could maybe draw an arrow going down. That is the pressure. Right there. Okay, what is the equation? I already told you the symbol for osmotic pressure. It's going to be capital Pi equals MRT. Very simple. This M is molarity. And you know molarity as moles per liter. The symbol for molarity units is big M, but when you do dimensional analysis or unit canceling, why don't you go ahead and just put mole horizontal line liter, and then you can start canceling out units appropriately. R is the gas constant. It's a gas constant with liters times atmospheres on top, mole dot K on the bottom. This temperatures in K. You notice that liters, moles, cancel out, K cancels out, and you're left with atmospheres, ATM. Honestly, that was really short. Um, that's all I want to say right now about 
uh, those two, again, vapor pressure lowering. The more concentrated the solution, the lower the vapor pressure. These trends should start to solidify or start to coalesce because you know also that we have boiling point elevation. And remember how the higher the boiling point, the lower the vapor pressure. Let me just add that actually. The or we could start we could go backwards. The lower the vapor pressure. Um what is it? The higher the boiling point. And that's why we get boiling point elevation for uh one of our colligative properties. Okay, that's a vapor pressure lowering, and then here we have osmotic pressure raising, and the more concentrated your solution is, the larger the osmotic pressure. Why don't I prepare a couple of problems that where we use uh, both of these equations, uh, Raoult's law and the osmotic pressure equation in another video.